This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by HelloFresh and by Magic Spoon. Wow, that monolith news sure got stale real quick. Yes, it feels like weeks ago now. Yeah, in the span of less than two weeks, it went from, oh, wow, look at this thing that they found in the desert. It's like it's a monolith. I'm so happy to see you. It went from that to monolith this, monolith that. Oh, wow, the monolith's gone. Oh, look, there's another monolith. Oh, my gosh, that monolith's gone too. Monolith, monolith, monolith. Shut up. Don't make me bring out our monolith. It is still right here because it's too big for the trash can. It is. But, uh, yeah, I mean, fine. Look, we do have some monolith news for you. And we'll get to it, but... Um, Look, first, an update on the most relevant thing that's actually happening right now. The war on Christmas. And uh, as a veteran of the war on <laughs> Christmas... Uh, we've been through a lot. We've been through many wars. I'm happy I didn't... I, I got the same shirt and I didn't wear it today. And I was like, man, I should have worn it. And then, sure enough, you brought the hat. This so. is a hat I absolutely can't wear in public at risk of being... Uh, <laughs> Stolen physically, Valor? Physically assaulted by a, a, an upset veteran who thinks I'm stealing Valor. Yeah, we both got these down at the VFW. <laughs> but uh, they were very angry about it. Look, as you uh, know by well, or well by now, uh, for years, the Democrats and secularists have been trying very hard to destroy one of the few things left in this world that's good. Christmas. The war on Christmas has previously been a decentralized war of skirmishes and insurgencies. But this year, those who would seek to destroy Christmas have found a leader to try and achieve victory once and for all. And that leader's name? Dr. Anthony Fauci. Boo! The nation's top epidemiologist claims to be trying to defeat a disease called COVID-19, but to Dr. Fauci, the real disease this whole time? Holiday cheer. Wow. Yeah, so that's obviously a joke. We're joking. Yes. YouTube. Yes, YouTube, we are joking. That was, do yeah. you understand? It was yeah. a joke. Over the top, sarcastic, and ridiculous. But yeah, I mean, that is pretty much what this year's War on Christmas is all about. Mm -hmm. Surprise. Uh, here's Congressman Andy Biggs last week on Twitter. First, it was the war on Easter. Then came the war on Independence Day. The war on Thanksgiving just ended. And the war on Christmas has started. The radical left, aided by allies in the mainstream media and the bureaucracy, have used COVID-19 to try to overturn our society. Um, I'd like to point out that COVID-19, currently winning. An yeah. insane body count. Like, all of these wars are technically lost because yeah. hundreds of thousands of people have died. Yeah. The war on the sure. holidays is, has so far been worse than any war almost in human history. Yeah. If Christmas is so great, why is it losing this war? See, that's why I'm scared. Christmas, best holiday. Mm -hmm. Going to be the hardest war. Arguably best yeah. holiday. Also, here's Congressman Jim Jordan, uh, one of our favorites, a few days back on Twitter. Dr. Fauci says Americans should avoid travel over the holidays. What will he cancel next? Saying Merry Christmas? <laughs> God damn it! No one's trying to Every stop you from saying year. Merry Christmas. I, yeah, look, Mr. Jordan, no. He's not, no, not unless you're shouting it directly into other people's mouths from less than six feet away while not wearing a mask. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. then stop doing that. Stop doing that. I would like to cancel that, please. But, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, here's Tucker Carlson, uh, by the way. Let's check in on him. All the focus on the big enduring things, the focus on our families, the focus on what's true and what's not true, the focus on eternity itself, all of that, tends to diminish the power of the people in charge of our temporal world for obvious reasons. We take our leaders less seriously when we're reminded that they're just people, slightly ludicrous, just like we are. When we're reminded that they too will pass, all of us will. If death is inevitable, and that may be the one thing you're not allowed to say in this country, but it's still true, then maybe we should pause before we destroy the living in the name of trying to eliminate it. Politicians understand this threat. They've figured out that Christmas is bigger than they are, and therefore it's a threat to them. Better cancel it. And in fact, they're trying hard. Yeah, great shit, dude. I mean, death is inevitable, so doing anything to prevent it from happening prematurely on a large scale, kind of pointless, yeah, right? Yeah, why bother? Also, that's not even the reason they're telling you not to throw your annual Christmas rager. It has nothing to do with public health. Anthony Fauci just sees Christmas as a threat to his power. That's why. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Santa thinks he can come in here and steal all the glory? I throw one bad pitch, and Santa wants to come in here and take all my glory. I literally, I cannot make it through more than like 60 seconds of Tucker Carlson. It it's drives me fucking crazy. Yeah, because it always he always has that face like looking like he doesn't understand anything that's going on. Like legitimately, I don't understand. Yeah, oh my gosh. Anyways, the only reason this year's twist on the war on Christmas is even happening is largely because so many of the people who obsess about a war on Christmas every year 
just decided to ignore health guidelines for the first nine months of the pandemic, which is currently killing over 2,000 people a day. Yeah, I mean, we could have had Christmas if you had done all the things that everyone was asking you to do back Potential in March. Potentially could have been the best Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> it could have been a real fuck fest. Yes. But uh, no, because we didn't earn Christmas. We are uh, literally on Santa's naughty list. We very much are. As a country. Yeah, deservedly so. Mm-hmm. I mean, for this and countless other reasons. We're going to find out that coal's the cure. Yeah. We all got a lump of coal and look what happened. Yeah. Coal this whole time. America's number one export. <sighs> Not really, but... Disgusting it, clean coal. Which employs tens of thousands of people. Coal, the most important thing in the world. Yeah. Anyway, while we're on the topic of politics, I, let's segue into some recent updates on some various Rudy Giuliani news that we've covered since the election. And actually, first up, breaking news, uh, Rudy Giuliani has tested positive for COVID. Yep. Oh my God! Who could How have seen did this, this happen? Yeah, this happened. This comes like uh, a little over two weeks after his son tested positive, and his son, of course, has just been around his dad and the rest of the and the White House, the goon squad. Yeah, yeah. his son might be the person who got uh, DJT Junior sick. Um, also, his son's job, Rudy Giuliani's son's job at the White House, is literally like, like facilitating sports teams yeah, to visit. Secretary of Vibes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. Say what you want about nepotism, but that is a vital role. Anyway, yeah, so that news about Rudy having the Rona, uh, it was actually first broken by the president himself, who tweeted, Rudy Giuliani, by far the greatest mayor in the history of New York City, and who has been working tirelessly exposing the most corrupt election, by far, in the history of the USA, has tested positive for the China virus. Get better soon, Rudy. We will carry on. Uh... And look, yeah, get better. I don't want Rudy to fucking die of this virus. It's just like, no, I'm not surprised at all that he got it. I hope he suffers a little bit. Yeah, I, at this point, like all these... Like fuck- Chris Christie suffered a little bit, and he's like kind of changed his tune about things a but, little bit. Yeah, out of all of them, I guess you could say that. He still sucks. But yeah, a lot of these other people, they're just like, I don't see what the big deal is. I got the best drugs uh, Yeah, no, the country, for them, it's so like, like, oh, well, he's, he already went to like the best hospital. Yeah. He's getting the cocktail. He's going to be out there fucking in no time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sw- wiping his sweat all over himself and his wife. The best part about all of this is like, he potentially had it back at that sweaty news conference. He's always been pretty sweaty, though. Like, there's, yeah, that, true. there's this one picture. I'll but I love it. that the video kept going around of him blowing his nose yeah, again. Just, just spread, rubbing virus all over his fucking face. Like, yeah. the man is is definitely a super spreader. And then the conspiracy uh, lawyer lady has been down in Georgia running amok, so she's probably spreading it down there. See, that's... So her, Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood, yeah. they're, they are, at this point, like, distinct entities from Rudy. Yeah. They, they weren't. At the beginning, there was all one group. And then they, they're like, oh, we don't know them. Completely it's so, different. The, 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 Those okay, people are fucking look, insane. So here's the thing. All of this is terrible. It's all, it's, it's bad for the country, bad for people. But like, I keep saying this over the past four years. It's like, man, the movie about this is going to be crazy. The movie about just Rudy Giuliani's foray into election fraud is going to be insane. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, yeah get well soon, uh... Yeah. Rudy, I guess. Uh, look, the outgoing president's personal attorney has, of course, spent the last month trying and failing to convince any judge that will listen that the 2020 election was stolen. And that's also involved multiple train wreck press conferences, like the one where his head was melting, and, of course, the one that kicked it all off, Four Seasons Total Landscaping. I mean, it was perfect. At exactly the same time the major news networks were determining that it was statistically impossible for Trump to win the election, his personal attorney was holding a press conference in the gravel parking lot in the back of a landscaping company with a name that suggested that they'd be meaning to book the uh, Four Seasons Hotel instead, but just fumbled the ball. Yeah. Anyway, now thanks to an article in the Philadelphia Inquirer, we can hear Four Seasons Total Landscaping's side of the story. And it's pretty much what people have already like been able to surmise. Uh, basically, management at Four Seasons got a phone call early that morning from the Trump campaign saying they were looking for possible venues for a news conference near the I-95 highway. Four Seasons agreed to let them come take a look, and by about an hour later, the deal was sealed. Yes, yeah, we, we went by and checked it out. Yeah, seems great. Um, as for the theory that Trump or his campaign thought that they'd actually booked the Four Seasons hotel, as suggested by Trump's initial 
tweet announcing the conference, which was quickly deleted and replaced with a different one. Uh, here's what the article says. And though the three say they love laughing at social media theories that they conned the campaign into thinking they were a ritzy Four Seasons hotel, quote, that's not the case, Middleton said. I gave them the address. I said where we were, where they can meet us, and that was that. They think the New York Times account of the situation is likely the most accurate, that Giuliani and Trump advisor Corey Lewandowski always intended to have the news conference in Northeast Philadelphia, where they would be more warmly received, and that, through a garbled game of telephone, it was the president who misunderstood the location. The Trump campaign did not reply to a request for comment. And but like they said earlier, I'm sure they called and they were like, here's our address, come take a look, and they went to take a look, which means they didn't at all. They probably just Googled Four Seasons Philadelphia and were like, yeah, that's got to be it. I mean, it sounds like they came by and they were just like, all right, cool, let's uh, let's go. I don't think they said It's go time. Anyway, as for accusations of partisanship, uh, the owner, Marie Saravo, said, it didn't matter which side this was. We would have done this for the Biden campaign. How do you turn down a president or a president-elect? You know what I mean? It was just so exciting that this was here. <laughs> and it makes sense, like, yeah. Yeah. Now the new question in Philly, is it Pats, is it Geno's, is yeah. it Four Seasons Total Landscaping? <laughs> yeah. Which one do you go to? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, still, according to the article, quote, and then came the hate. Critics from both sides left scathing messages and conspiracy theorists flooded the company's phone lines, email inboxes, and social media accounts, accusing Four Seasons Total Landscaping of money laundering for the DNC and burning Trump ballots at the crematorium across the street. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, how deep does this go? Yeah. Philly, also the place where that hitchhiking robot got beat to death. That's so right. Mm. It's right. a tough city. This is uh, a ro no-robot neighborhood. <laughs> that robot wheeled into the wrong neighborhood. Mm -hmm. As for how things have been going since the press conference, on Thanksgiving, two sisters met halfway between Bethlehem and New York for a feast outside her office. Another woman brought a small Christmas tree and her children so they could take a holiday card photo in front of the green awning. Visitors have left votive candles and left decorated signs at the branded wire fence, staging photo ops. People from across the world have bought her company t-shirts, sending pictures of themselves proudly wearing the Four Seasons logo. We're a Wikipedia now, Saravo said. <laughs> We're a Wikipedia. Wow. Some have asked Saravo if they could have a party or host weddings at the lot. Quote, this is a construction yard. That's a liability, she said, laughing again. But it did make us paint the back of the building because we said, who knew that our garage doors were going to be the back of every Zoom meeting? People have sent cheesesteaks, Domino's pizza gift cards, beard oil, fruit gift baskets, and more to their front door, while others have stopped foreman on the job to ask for selfies with their truck. Yeah, it's going great for them. I love that people it's are dropping off beard oil just because it seems like the most like easy to sell thing like online or just like, hey, if we can get a picture of one of the guys that's yeah. from the landscaping company with our beard oil, it'll do great things. Yeah, it's, uh, they, it's all part of the viral economy now. Yeah. I just think it's funny that like the past couple of years, beard oil has been like such a hot ticket item. But yeah. I guess it's, people, beards are in style. Yeah. You look great. I use, uh, I, use, uh, I use beard oil every day. There you go. You got it. Your skin will dry out. Anyways, another Rudy Giuliani update. Uh, remember Melissa Carone? You might not recognize the Excuse name. Excuse me, what? But she's one of Rudy Giuliani's star witnesses who uh, we talked about a few episodes ago. I, to refresh your memory, just watch this clip. The, the, poll book, the poll book is completely off. Completely off. Off that by 30,000? I'd say that poll book is off by over 100,000. That how? poll book... Why don't you look at the registered voters on there? How many registered voters are on there? Did you do you even know the answer to that? No, I guess it's, I'm trying to get to the bottom zero. of this here. Zero. Zero. There's zero. So, my question then is if the guess how many? Wait. What about what about how what what, what about the turnout rate? A hundred and twenty percent. Let's uh, let's let Representative Johnson ask his plastic question. So, <laughs> so the why we're not seeing the poll book off by thirty thousand votes. That, that's not the what case. What did you guys do? Take it and uh, do something crazy to it? I'm just saying the numbers are not off by 30,000 votes. So I know what I saw. That they're filling in? I know what I saw. And I signed something saying that if I'm wrong, I can go to prison. Okay. Did you? Okay, we're... we're I think, I'm just trying I to th ask you... Let me... So yeah, that lady. That lady that we just showed you. How uh, could you forget? Local news in her home state of Michigan decided to look into just who the hell she is. And uh, turns out she's got a bit of a criminal record, which, you know, look, in a lot of cases, who cares? Yeah. But in Melissa Caron's case, it's all very in line with that whole unhinged psycho vibe that we saw at the Giuliani hearing. Yeah. Uh, so here you go. From Deadline Detroit. 
Two years before she'd become the breakout star of the clown show Rudy Giuliani brought to Lansing this week, Melissa Carone was sending her then boyfriend's ex-wife graphic videos of the two of them having sex. Police reports obtained by Deadline Detroit reveal obscenity and computer crime charges filed against the 33-year-old Gross Point Woods mom stem from a harassment campaign she waged against a 42-year-old woman in 2018 and 2019. Earlier Friday, the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office said Carone pleaded the initial charges down to disorderly conduct, a misdemeanor. It continues. Her boyfriend's ex-wife, Jessica, called Southgate Police about Carone multiple times between November 2018 and September 2019, initially after receiving three videos from an unknown email address showing Carone and her ex having sex. Carone's last name was then Wright. Police traced the IP address from the emails to Carone, who initially denied sending them, but revealed she was aware of their content. Eventually, she confessed to investigators, saying her goal was to send Jessica over the top. She admitted to also asking her boyfriend, Matthew Stackpool, to cover her tracks by getting a new router and internet provider. So, yeah, this is just... Uh, yeah, I did it. This is my favorite... That sounds like me. <laughs> my favorite, and when I say favorite, I mean least favorite kind of, uh, like, psycho girlfriend is the one who uh, gets with a guy and then just becomes obsessed with that guy's ex, who he's clearly... He's involved with you now, but you become mm -hmm. obsessed with just pissing her off. He's like, yeah, I'm going to send my boyfriend's ex-wife a bunch of pictures and videos of us fucking. You jealous? Just to drive her crazy. Really says a lot about uh, the type of person she is. Yeah. The type of person that would uh, just go out there and lie. And then seemingly get worried about it halfway through. And you're like, did you have to sign a document that said that you had to go to jail? Because I did. I don't think so. Look, in other politics news that's also an update, Donald Trump is, of course, probably going to do what most presidents do on their way out and just pardon a bunch of criminals. And he's already pardoned General Michael Flynn. Uh, one criminal really hoping that he makes the cut is Joseph Maldonado Passage, a.k.a. Joe Exotic, who's serving a 22-year prison sentence for hiring someone to try and murder his big cat rival, Carol Baskin. That bitch. That bitch. Back in September, we talked about how Joe and his legal team had sent a 257-page document to Trump asking for a pardon and making the case that he was wrongfully convicted and in serious danger in prison. And they've also deployed a pardon Joe Exotic bus that's been spotted around D.C. a whole bunch. And now, with Trump on his way out, and with pardoning season in full swing, Team Joe Exotic is really looking to get that pardon. And they just might. Uh... You see Michael Flynn, like, got out and was then like, the president needs to put the Constitution on hold. Yeah, uh, yeah. He immediately, he's just like, uh, yeah. So now that I'm now that I'm in the clear, we need to do a fascism, and yeah. we need to do it. We now. need martial law, and <laughs> yeah. we need to get rid of the Constitution yeah. right now. Yeah. That guy, what, Michael Flynn, like it's fucking insane because he is like at this point he's clearly just like a fucking crazy person. That man had serious power for a very long time. Yeah, like he was, he had. He had a lot of control and responsibility over our armed forces I'd for a long time. I'd be willing to say, all things considered, and considered he's a free man and pardon now, uh, we might soon see what spite looks like when in the hands of someone like that. Yeah, yeah. it'll be interesting. Luckily, he doesn't have any power now, so. Anyway, from the New York Times, quote, Others seeking creative ways to forge ties to the president include Joseph Maldonado Passage, the former Oklahoma zoo owner who is better known as Joe Exotic. His representatives have been running a carefully orchestrated campaign to try to persuade Mr. Trump to pardon Mr. Maldonado Passage, who is one year into a 22-year sentence for trying to hire a hitman to kill an animal rights activist. They have focused on getting Mr. Trump's attention through appeals to Donald Trump Jr. and Mr. Kushner, appearances on Fox News, and a visit to the Trump International Hotel in Washington, where one organizer said they ran up a tab of a about $10,000 to try to get Mr. Trump's attention. <laughs> it's great. I, I, I just love that. Like, it's so just, everyone knows that that's the kind of graft you got to do. Like, Trump's not even going to give you the time of fucking day if Unless you, you, don't, spend a certain you don't spend some fucking money at one of his properties. True. Yeah. Uh, and here's ABC News. Quote, the president's first post-election pardon of his first national security advisor, former Lieutenant General, General Michael Flynn, has been described by sources as the beginning of a trend. The president is expected to announce more pardons over the coming weeks and will not necessarily wait until his last days in office, as former presidents have typically done, sources involved with the deliberations say. We've heard from the Tiger King, said one source, who added, you wouldn't believe the amount of calls, some insane, that we've gotten. <laughs> Uh, we are waiting on the pen to hit the paper. We think we are very, very close. Eric Love, an attorney for Joseph Maldonado Passage, a.k.a. Tiger King Joe Exotic, said about a potential presidential pardon. So it might happen. Might happen. I, I, wouldn't that be... That would, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked at all. Like, 
if he just went ahead and did I, it. The, I think that the, the, the best way to position this for the Trump family is to be like, look, haven't we all tried to do something illegal and then have it be uh, like completely foiled by your own stupidity? Yeah. I think we can all relate on that. Well, they, and like, it sounds like that's the angle they're taking. Like one of the excerpts, I'm too stupid to actually commit this crime. Well, one of the excerpts from uh, Joe Exotic's original letter to Trump was just like, man, they did me dirty, just like they did you dirty, exactly. sir, when, uh, you know, grab him by the pussy tape, like totally out of context. Right, you know, right, fake sir. Fake news. Right. Just like, just like what they said about me, fake news. Yeah. Anyways, in other politics news, well, let's stay, step away from the U.S. for a second and check in on the, the EU. Uh, conservatives over here are fighting pandemic health guidelines by having their annual Christmas white elephant party or whatever, despite being urged not to. Over in Europe, though, at least one conservative politician took things a lot further by uh, attending a big gay orgy. Yep. Also against coronavirus guidelines. Yes. Uh, this News Hub NZ headline sums it up pretty well. Anti-gay Hungarian politician Joseph Sager resigns after being caught attending 25-man orgy in breach of COVID-19 rules. They count all the guys running away from the orgy? Yep. That's two dozen. Yep. Uh, also, this headline from uh, the New, Ze New Zealand Herald adds a nice little detail. Ultra-conservative MP leaps from window as Belgian police raid orgy for breaking COVID rules. I want to know in what state of undress he was. Like, shoes on, but just tidy whities Yeah, I haven't been able to f uh, figure that out. Yeah. But yeah, th this guy, who has been super anti-gay for his entire political career, and even personally wrote parts of Hungary's current constitution, which bans gay couples from adopting children, was found with 24 other naked men at an orgy in Brussels after police received a noise complaint and tried to get away by jumping out of a window. He apparently injured himself in the fall and was caught by police, who searched him and found some ecstasy in his bag, Dare I say he's probably anti-drug as well, especially party drugs? Yeah. Also, according to some reports, when the cops first busted in on the party, some of the guests supposedly thought they were part of the entertainment and tried to unzip their pants. Luckily, this didn't happen in America, or they would have gotten the wrong love gun. Yeah, the real gun. And Brussels was like, oh, not today, I'm on duty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, Joseph Sager's political career uh, pretty much ruined now, as you might guess. Uh, he was pretty close with Hungary's current prime minister, Viktor Orban, before, but he's now been kicked out of the ruling Fidesz party that's been in power for the last 10 years. Uh, and look, listen, there's nothing wrong with being gay. We have to say this every time. Uh, and under normal non-pandemic circumstances, there's nothing wrong with orgies as long as you keep things safe. Mm -hmm. uh, but when someone spends their entire career treating homosexuality as degeneracy, it is funny when they get caught engaging in that same degeneracy themselves and then lose everything because of it. Yes, it's the hypocrisy. Tale as old as time. Every time something like this pops up, because it pops up frequently, yeah. we have to put that disclaimer out there. Mm -hmm. It's... It's the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy. Nothing wrong with being gay. Yeah. Have all the gay sex you want. Wear a condom. But don't spend your entire life rallying against gay people yeah. to then only be found to be gay. And uh, you, look, it happens every three months. It really does. We're going to have to go through this again. So, yeah. look, let's do a monolith update. Ugh. Here he comes, 2020's biggest star. Hello, Mr. Monolith. You've had quite a week. What's that? Well, oh, you want to go away? You want to retire now and you don't want anyone to talk about you anymore? That's a great idea. Yeah. All right. Bye, Monolith. So, look, last we checked, the Utah Monolith had appeared and then disappeared. A new Monolith had appeared and disappeared in Romania, and a huge Monolith-like wooden penis sculpture in Germany had also disappeared. Well, since then, we've gotten a lot more insight about the Utah monolith and how that disappeared. An outdoorsman named Sylvan Christensen took credit for it on Instagram, where he posted a bunch of photos of him and others removing the monolith, along with a caption explaining why they did it. Now, it's a long explanation, but basically he says they did it because the monolith was attracting too many people and causing too much destruction to public land via littering and whatnot. So in the spirit of leave no trace, they removed the monolith. Yeah, and I think he's got a yeah. Good point. Yeah, it's fine. Um, whatever. Since then, though, a third monolith has appeared and disappeared up in Northern California, or I guess Central California, mm -hmm. in the city of Atascadero. Nice little city right above San Luis Obispo. Between, oh, lovely place. It's right between Slow and um, Paso Robles. Mm. Um, I've driven through it many a time. But uh, yeah, this, this monolith was placed at the top of a mountain that was frequented by hikers. And uh, it was only up there for a couple days. So as for how and why this one was removed, 
There's no mystery at all, actually. The people who did it live streamed the whole thing to DLive.com. Isn't that the Bitcoin one? That PewDiePie yeah, was that's on the for one a while? that PewDiePie was on for like a minute. Um, at this point, it has now turned into just basically like Twitch for everyone who's been uh, deplatformed de- de- from other websites for being like Nazis. Um, and yeah, the people. <laughs> The, the people who did this, uh, based on their commentary throughout the stream, um, they said they drove five hours to knock down the monolith and replace it with a cross because, quote, Christ is king in this country. We don't want illegal aliens from Mexico or outer space, so let's tear this bitch down. Uh, they also apparently did a bunch of racist oh, shit God. Uh, throughout the stream. They referenced white power and burning crosses. Um, at one point in the stream, they apparently became convinced that Antifa was onto them and were stalking them in the dark of night. Probably just a fucking like coyote or some shit, or nothing at all. Yeah, but they, and then while they were you knocking can't it see over, him wearing that black clothes. While they were knocking it over, like uh, trying to break it from its platform, they were like, "Christ is king, Christ is king." Just the dumbest. We will now replace you, and they put yeah. the cross down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in an update to the giant wooden penis sculpture in Germany, though, it's apparently been replaced already with a new giant wooden penis sculpture. Cool. Way to go, Germany. Yeah. As you'll recall, the original penis had been up on the mountain for about two years before disappearing right around the time that all this other model of stuff was happening. And there's still no explanation for what happened to it, but someone went to the trouble last week of building a newer, even bigger giant wooden dick to take its place. Anyways, meanwhile, more and more metal monoliths continue to appear in various places around the world, and it's clearly just other people with access to metalworking tools trying to go viral. But as with any meme or challenge or anything viral, there is diminishing returns. And everyone is very tired of all this monolith stuff by now. I know that we are. Yeah. Someone please come pick up our monolith. We can't fit it in the trash can. Yeah, if you Google monoliths right now, it's just like, it's they're popping up everywhere. It's like, oh, there's one in, the, in a park in Holland. And it's like, oh, this local art collective is just building a bunch of monoliths and placing them all. It's, it, who, fair, who cares anymore? I can't even take it to the recycling drop-off because it's closed because of COVID. Yeah. I looked it up to try to get rid of it. So you should just go put it in a park. It'll be in the fucking news. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't littering. It's an art piece. Yeah. As long as you dress up your litter, it's fine, right? Anyways, before we get to the headlines, this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. HelloFresh is easy and stress-free. The recipes are easy to follow with simple steps and pictures to guide you along the way. HelloFresh cuts out the stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. HelloFresh is also flexible for your lifestyle. Easily change your delivery days or meal plan preferences and skip a week whenever you need to, right in the app. And depending on your appetite, you can keep your fridge stocked by adding extra meals, proteins, quick meals like breakfast, on the go, or 10-minute lunches, and even desserts to satisfy that sweet tooth. Mm. Again, we've been over this, but we love our HelloFresh. Usually go for the quicker meals, especially now that it's like getting dark so early. I'm like ready to eat dinner like way earlier than usual now. So just get it done in 15, 20 minutes, get in my mouth, and let me go to bed. The one pot wonders, Mm -hmm. just literally one pot. Say you don't have to wash as many dishes. And then maybe to make. Every, uh, once every two weeks or so, I get one of those decadent ones, like a nice filet mignon or yeah. something like that. Yeah. There you go. Anyways, go to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird90 and use code WeeklyWeird90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. Again, that is $90 off, including free shipping, by going to our link, HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird90 and using our code WeeklyWeird90. And this episode is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Oh, Wow. Uh, eating cereal is, of course, you know, one of the best things about being a kid. But as you get older and your palate changes and gets more refined and your metabolism starts slowing down a bit, uh, you realize that most of the breakfast cereals that you used to love are basically candy. Mm-hmm. They're full of sugar and other junk that you really shouldn't be eating all that much of. And, uh, yeah, but Magic Spoon, completely different. Each serving is just 110 calories and has zero sugar, 11 grams of protein, and only three net grams of carbs. And it also somehow... Tastes amazing. It's almost too good to be true, but I, I really like eating this stuff. It's become my go-to in the morning. Even now eating it, I can't believe it has no sugar in it. Yeah. It's very sweet. Magic Spoon, it comes in four flavors straight out of your childhood. Cocoa, fruity, frosted, and I believe this is blueberry. Blueberry. You can try them all in a variety pack. These cereals, they're keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. And again, they taste really good. So go to the link down below or head to magicspoon.com slash weeklyweird and use our promo code weeklyweird, all one word, at checkout to get free shipping. 
Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Again, that is magicspoon.com slash weeklyweird, and use code weeklyweird, all one word, to get free shipping. It really is it's really delicious good. cereal. Anyway, let's get to the headlines now. First headline, 102-year-old woman beats COVID-19 twice. <laughs> well, uh, there's your answer for can you get reinfected. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, we've known this. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, I mean, this is, this is incredible. This lady's 102 years old, beating the disease twice, but I, I can't help, every time I see something, like a news headline like this, I'm like, some, not say that. some asshole out there is going to be like, see, no danger. It's the same thing that I, I, and I said, and I still say, when Donald Trump got it and beat it, it was the worst thing that ever happened for people taking this disease yeah. serious. Like, he's fine. Yeah, this fat piece of shit who eats McDonald's all day yeah. is fine. Completely fine. But uh, yeah, not that he has the access to the best healthcare on earth. Yeah, but this old lady, they really should get some samples of her blood. Mm-hmm. We don't know how how much longer she's gonna be around, but this lady is resilient. It's 100 percent prune juice. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the secret. Yeah. Werther's Originals and prune juice. Yeah, they they need to study this lady. Every time there's one of these old fucking ladies who's just lived through all sorts of bad shit. They yeah. need to They need to write everything down about what they and do. And there's always, like, anytime they interview them, there's always, but, like, one yeah, thing like, that they do that isn't healthy, but they're yeah. like, I swear by it. Yeah, I've been, uh, you know, I've been drinking my own piss this whole time. <laughs> yeah, there was one lady who was, like, 108 or something. They're like, what's your secret? She's like, I have a Coors Light every night for dinner, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a lot of, like, alcohol ones. They're like, <laughs> yeah, just bourbon. One that pops up a lot is, like, yeah, every morning I rub olive oil all over my face. Okay, that must be it. And that's why the Greeks lived to be 200 years old. That's right. Uh-huh. Moving on. Woman sells husband's PlayStation 5 after she discovers it is not an air purifier. That's a, that's a clever grift, though. Yeah. It does kind of look like an air purifier. It looks like any product. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the design of the, the PS5. The the, the, okay. the Xbox One X looks too generic. It's a monolith. <laughs> yeah, but it's like... It would actually be cool if it was metallic. But it's just a black box. Mm. Like... The PlayStation 5 at least has some some design aesthetic to it. It's like the Corvette of... Uh... Yeah. But yeah, this I don't know how long this guy got away with it, but this happened in Taiwan. And, well, uh, it had to have been at least... like it, It's not any more than a month. Yeah. Oh. But uh, yeah, it, this this got to the news because some guy in Taiwan bought it on uh, like Facebook or some social media. It was, it, he like, it was basically listed at cost. And he was like, that's weird. You can't find these things anywhere. Mm-hmm. And he managed to get it. When he showed up to buy it, the, the husband was there. He's like, yeah, so I, I told her it was an air purifier. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she figured it out. Anyway, just happy this can go to a good home. Please take care of it. Think of me when you play. This close to cyberpunk. Yeah. Oh, my God. Fuck. Yeah, that's coming. Tuesday, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Something well, like that. R.I.P. my life. I probably won't even play it for a while. <sighs> I... Yeah, I don't know. I still have to play Warcraft. I haven't had fucking internet in three weeks. Two and a half weeks. I mean... Just my phone. But... Yeah. Adolf Hitler elected in Namibia's local council elections, but has no plans for world domination. Yeah, but that's what the first Hitler said. Yeah. (laughs) Fool me once. Shame on me. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Shame on you. Anyway. Can't be fooled again. Yeah, this is a thing you see pop up in a lot of countries that weren't directly affected by World War II. They have no real, like, historical connection to it. So they're just like, everyone's talking about this Hitler guy. It must be important. I'm going to change, uh, uh, name my son Adolf Hitler. <laughs> yeah, Adolf Hitler. Give him a strong, powerful name. It's like, it was either like, name my son Alexander after Alexander the Great, or George Washington after George Washington, or, I don't know, you see a lot of pictures of this guy with this weird mustache. Seems like, seems like a lot of people really respect this guy. I'm going to name my kid Adolf Hitler. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this guy, he's, he's deeply ashamed of it. He's like, yeah, look, I found <clears throat> out eventually. And just change like, the name. It sucks. Uh, I... I well, now we're all having a bit of a laugh. Well, he, he doesn't go by... He goes by, like, just his last name, which is... Hitler? No. Oh. His, his, his first name Adolf, middle name Hitler. Last name, something actually Namibian. He just goes by Mr. That. Hmm. But, uh, yeah. Real name, Adolf Hitler. Sad. But he's doing, doing what he can with it. Trying but, to make the best of a we'll see unfortunate how, situation. We'll, we'll circle back on this after a couple of years and see how he's doing. Yeah, I, I do want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but... Uh, he lo- he it, entered the local art contest and he lost, it and does, it really pissed him off. It does raise some suspicions. <laughs> sure. Keep one eye open. On You're on notice, Hitler. Hitler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got uh, my eye on you, Adolf. 41 test positive for COVID after Swingers Convention in New Orleans. Um, 
Well, I'd say like good for the swingers community of uh, staying in business, but you know, this is the results. But it so it's like yeah, this convention it was like uh, it was only like 300 people. So these actually this is this is like more than 10% of the attendees. Um but yeah, they're like, yeah, like oh, we don't know how this happened. Like we had all these rules on the convention floor, like we observed I'm like yeah, okay, but like wh- what about the swing? What about after the con- after, you know, Convention's like eight hours of the day. What do you think happened uh, at night? At night, you think everyone, oh, everyone just went just home? Went, you know, <laughs> they, would, they they stayed in the streets, six feet apart, and listened to some jazz yeah. music and had a few cocktails. We had no idea our swingers convention would turn into some sort of fuck fest. It's really disappointing. I'm wondering though. I think we brought this up in a previous episode. I wonder if any furry conventions have happened and if they've been safe because of the you old mask think? and yeah, the the actual the snout. If each snout is three feet long. Then you're always six feet, six feet away. That's a long snap. <laughs> I mean, is it though? Uh, you're right. No, you're right. Well, uh, uh, it sucks because, uh, like, like we always say, people go there, and if they get sick, it's like, well, that, yeah. I mean, what do you think was going to happen? But then they unknowingly spread it to other people, which is the bad thing. Yeah. If they the were, worst. If thing. they had worn fursuits, this probably the numbers would probably be much lower. Maybe even zero. Or just stayed at home. They should bring Comic Con back, but you can only go if you're cosplaying as a plague doctor. Yes. Because <laughs> there's a lot of plague doctors, uh, cyber or uh, steampunk sort of costumes you see at these things. If everyone has to be a plague doctor with a functional plague mask. No, you have to show up on a giant mechanical spider yeah. or in a plague doctor outfit. Yeah. Let let the steampunk conventions carry on. Yes. Everyone else hasn't earned it yet. San Francisco bans smoking inside apartments. Pot smoking, okay. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, so like the logic here, the local pot smokers were like, look, we it's illegal to smoke pot outside. Our apartments are the only place we're allowed to do it. Yeah. So they're like, okay, fine, you can smoke pot in your apartment. You can't smoke cigarettes in your apartment, though. I don't know. Well, I think both are kind of a fire risk. Yeah. But the cigarettes one is like, uh, I, I don't know about, does pot leave like that uh, tar residue everywhere? I don't. I mean, probably a little bit. Because like, cigarettes definitely yeah, yellow it, up the walls. Yeah, if you go into like... Any, and they linger. Yeah, any house that's had like smokers inside of it, everything is And it smells tainted. like... It smells like wet uh, laundry cigarette smell. Yeah, a friend of mine has a... He bought like a Gibson Les Paul from uh, a guy who just like died. Um, the, the guy had had the guitar for like 30 years and smoked in the house where the guitar was kept. The guitar is still fucking... It reeks. It smells... Like an ashtray, like 10 years later. It's still, it's just part of it now. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think you get anything like that with weed. weed. Yeah. But also, every hardcore stoner's house you've been in, there's a piece of the carpet that's just like burnt. Burnt. Yeah. So like, yeah, you the cherry guy. Cherry blew <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, it popped out. Yeah. Blew. Yeah. Ohio High School Athletic Association coronavirus rules. Students can wrestle, but can't shake hands. <sighs> Wasn't there already an outbreak because of this? I don't know. <clears throat> Wasn't there like a, a giant fucking herpes outbreak a couple years back because of like wrestling oh, too? Yeah, yeah. High school wrestling is uh, more than other high school sports. They do spread uh, diseases. You're, this, this is you're so, rubbing all over each other. You might yeah, as well be fucking. This is yeah. So they they're not allowed to shake hands and they have to wear masks when they're not uh, sparring or whatever. But it's like while you're wrestling, you're like in the other person's face as you much are, as humanly possible. You are basically having sex with them. Mm-hmm. They should just not have wrestling this year. Yeah, just take one year off. Yeah, or make them wear some weird gimp suit while they're doing it. Yeah. And and uh, cover themselves in lube. The kink community comes in to yeah. save the day. Gimp wrestling. Yes, that'd be nice. It's safe. <laughs> yeah. Ohio Department of Health now recommending those in Ohio avoid traveling to Ohio. <laughs> I got to read the actual, the actual article is incredible. Yeah, they, 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 they had a lot of fun with it. Like, yeah, you can tell they were having a great time. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, we talk about, when you, you can tell when... These local reporters for local news, when they when they're having, a, they can crack their knuckles. They're like, finally, finally, a chance to my really time to shine. Have fun here instead of just like transcribing the police blog. <clears throat> yeah, the the opening uh, paragraph of this article: Ohio has been added to the Ohio Department of Health's COVID nineteen travel advisory map, meaning the state is recommending Ohioans avoid traveling to Ohio, and those entering Ohio after traveling from Ohio are advised to self quarantine in Ohio for fourteen days. <laughs> I love it, but also. The entire map of the United States is purple right now. Yeah, dude. So it's, just it's, stay inside. It's fucking bad. Stay inside. You, Christmas is not fucking happening. And if it is, you're an idiot. Stop it. Stop it. None of the things you, you like to do are happening. And that's because there's a pandemic. It's not because there's a fucking conspiracy to stop you from loving Jesus. Uh, it's because 
the fucking virus is completely out of control in this country right now. You know, now. Uh, I remember a little story about Jesus who, uh, when things got bad, went away for three days, locked himself away completely, and then he came out like brand new. Yeah, true. Be like he, Jesus. Jesus did a little bit of quarantining <laughs> himself. <laughs> I know a thing or two about quarantining. Yeah. yeah, I was at a real rough point in my life, meaning I died. Yeah. Uh, but then quarantine for three days, like brand new, yeah. like magic appears. And in the Old Testament, Jonah did a little quarantining inside of that whale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Things got bad for Noah, him and his family. They quarantined on that boat until, yeah. until the stuff blew over. Just with some animals. Yeah. But it wasn't like a wet market. No. No. <laughs> no. No. No pangolins. <laughs> You can get off. Get the boat. out of here. No. Get off the boat. Oh. Mississippi police looking for man who pulled down his mask during bank robbery. This every week there's one of these where someone commits a crime with their ma- like, and their mask is hanging below. Yeah, their head. Like, this is the perfect time for doing bank robberies. You can walk into a bank wearing a full mask and no one's going to ask questions. And they're then, like, you can only come in if you have a yeah, mask on. Yeah, you have to wear a mask. And they go in there like, all right, so listen up. <laughs> <laughs> Hand over the money. Oh, fuck. Shit. Well, it's so funny. It's just it, like, remember at the beginning of this shit when, like, there was a lot of people being like, oh, you're going to see a big rise in, in crimes. Like, people are just going to walk into every convenience store and start robbing it. And, like, I don't believe there's been any spike in, in uh, like, the sorts of crimes that normally involve masks And everyone at all. that commits it takes their fucking mask yeah, yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Cause, yeah, because generally the type of person to do these kind of crimes is not, you know too smart about anything. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, East Bay cops respond to burglary call, discover dozen raccoons brawling instead. Well, yeah. They do look like little burglars. They do. Yeah, they are burglars. And, uh, yeah, they, the, the cops got called because, the, like, the neighbors... Do they make little fists with their little hands? I mean, they do have little hands. I don't know. But, like, they, they were causing such a ruckus. Just do you like, think they understand the concept of punching? Probably. Uh, I mean, multiple animals do. Kangaroos. Yeah. It's terrifying. They punch with their legs. Yeah, they also punch with their legs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, yeah, raccoons, they they do cause a ruckus, uh, and they're terrifying, and they don't like, they don't respect human beings. They don't like us, they don't respect us. You show up, and they're like, what? What are you looking at? Yeah, this is completely normal. Why don't you take a fucking picture, asshole? Yeah. There was, like, uh, my college campus, if you were walking around uh, past a certain hour, there's like this loading dock area with a lot of dumpsters for like the film school and the library. And there would be like, no joke, like 30 or 40 fucking uh, raccoons there at once. And mm-hmm. like, you just couldn't cross through that. It's ours You're now. You're just like, no, you go around the library. It's going to take like another bra? five minutes. No, but they, I mean, they just like fuck shit up. There'd be trash everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like every morning someone would have to no go respect. Out there. <laughs> yeah, no respect. No respect. Oh. There's a gaping hole in our knowledge. The scientists studying why gamers invert their controls. Um, I'll tell you why. Because when I was growing up, it was inverted on flight simulator games. Yeah. And that's how I learned. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I still... I play with mouse and keyboard normal. But I play... if I, Anything... Anything that has anything to do with flying. Any, well, anything with a controller, including first-person shooters, I invert. Just... Yeah, it's because... Multiple things. Like, all the flight sims... Like, because that's how actual joysticks work mm-hmm. in... Planes, but then also um, GoldenEye and Time Crisis had inverted as their default controls. And those were like, I think, the first two major like FPS games on consoles. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, I just never grew out of it. Yeah. But uh, people, always, I get, I've gotten so much fucking shit over the years from people like, hold on, I gotta pause this because you, you know, yeah, playing a fucking game. Well, let me pause and switch to invert. And they're like, what the fuck? What the hell's wrong with you? It's just it's a it's one of those generational things. Well, it's like I like to think of the joystick as my head. head. Yeah. So it's like, look up, look down. That's how it makes sense in a flying game. Yeah. And that's what I've played before any FPS. Yeah. So I was used to it. So there, I've scientists. Better. That's all you need to know. Yeah. So call me up. Call me up, scientists. I want yeah, to be in, a call. Your, in your paper. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. We hope you had a wonderful time going on this journey with us. We'll be back, of course, next week for more episodes. I uh, hope you're having a uh, good December, all things considered. Yeah. So, you know, we're here if you need us. Hit us up on Twitter if you want to chat. I don't know. Look, we're all inside. If you get bored, just, I don't know, send us a funny picture. Yeah. 
There you go. I'll probably look at it. Yeah. I, I like pretty much everything that isn't offensive. Yeah. Like, if someone tells me to fuck off, not liking it. Nope. But almost everything else, I'll give you a free like. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Watch our most recent episodes over here because uh, Warner Brothers is doing some freaky stuff with their release schedule. Mm -hmm. Watch out. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.